So, welcome to another Modern World History video. This one looking at section four of your unit one spec. Um, that is the development of the Cold War. Now, the Cold War for some historians would be considered the Third World War, but it was different to World War One and World War Two, mainly because the two main combatants, the two main enemies, didn't actually fight each other. And during this unit, you're going to look at the ways that the competition between them got very close to becoming an actual war that many people thought could have been the end of the world. Now, before you consider this unit, it's important that you understand what communism is about. So if you haven't already watched the video in this playlist on communism, now is a really important time to do that because you need to be really clear about what communism is and how it's different to capitalism. With that in mind, the Cold War is between the USA, the major superpower that's a capitalist power after the end of World War II, and the Soviet Union, the main communist superpower. Now the phrase superpower came to define these two countries because following World War II, the power and influence of Britain and France had definitely declined, leaving these two as the main players on the world stage. Now there's three main areas of the Cold War and three main ways in which we can see what happened. And they are a propaganda battle, here, an arms race, and strategic alliances. And you can use the acronym PARA to help you remember these three important topics. Now we're actually going to come back to this propaganda poster in a future video, but we're going to kind of really quickly just touch on some of the points here. This is a communist poster. We can see communist workers in the background being rejecting the American offer here of food and what's Actually, on this bit here, it refers to NATO, which we're going to come to in a later video. But obviously, hidden inside is this weapon. And this is one of the ways that the Cold War played out. Propaganda that was used to undermine the other superpower. So, in the first instance, one of the ways that the Cold War was fought was in the battle for each ideology, uh, so both communism and capitalism, to convince the people in the countries that they had influence over that the other one was to blame for any perceived problems or troubles. OK, so we'll come back to that later, but the, the one thing that we're going to talk about mostly in, in this video is actually the arms race here. And um, we're going to be looking at how this plays out because this had a major impact on the Cold War and is the thing that most people think brought us closest to a conflict that could have been the end of civilization. Now, we hear it called the arms race, also the nuclear arms race. And you can see in this graphic here, this is representing the number of nuclear weapons owned by both the United States and the USSR, also known as Russia, between 1945 and 2005. And what we can look at really quickly is how the United States, who we can see here developing the atomic bomb earlier than Russia, used that and how that impacted upon the relations between the two countries and in, in part contributed to this Cold War. Now, both the United States and Russia were running programmes to try and develop a nuclear weapon during World War II. The Americans were running a project codenamed the Manhattan Project. And one of the key scientists involved in that is Oppenheimer. We can see him here with Albert Einstein. Now, this is Oppenheimer actually inspecting the wreckage of the bomb site from the first nuclear test, codenamed Trinity. But before we look at the successful creation of the nuclear bomb, it's worth just thinking about how this race panned out. Now, this sign here is actually a sign at Oak Ridge, which is one of the, the nuclear test sites and one of the places where nuclear weapons were developed in America. And we can see here these instructions to the workers who are working on the project, really, really emphasising the need for complete security over this information. Atomic weapons were seen as an absolute game changer. They were going to be the weapon that completely redefined what was happening in World War II. And there was a real scramble to get there before other countries. And so as part of that, keeping the information, the progress that you were making secret became a really, really important thing, not just for America, but for every country who was seeking to gain an atomic bomb. And of course, every country was running spying rings and running spying circuits that were trying to find out how far each other country had got in terms of developing the bomb. And this is part of what contributed towards um, in the Red Scare, which you might have already studied in your Unit 3 work. Now, back to the Trinity project. This here is a photograph of the successful explosion at Trinity on July the 16th, 1945. And this on the side here is a quote uh, taken from Oppenheimer and um, repeated on television years later. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. And it was reported that he said this upon witnessing the power of the atomic bomb here. 
And this is meant to reflect his realisation that by inventing and by contributing towards this atomic bomb, he had unleashed a, a weapon so powerful that it, it could be the literal destroyer of Earth. In actual fact, there's a bit of controversy over whether Oppenheimer really felt that way about it and whether or not he said this at the time. Um, in fact, one person who was there at the time said his simple reaction was, it worked. Others who witnessed it said that he seemed relieved that the bomb actually worked and functioned. This is him inspecting the aftermath. Now, there were two important consequences from this invention of the bomb. And these are two of the models here that the USA invented, Fat Man and Little Boy. One of the consequences was the bomb's use in ending World War II, which we'll talk about in a second. The other was its effect on how the USA interacted with other countries, most notably the Soviet Union. It changed completely the dynamic at the final conference um, that the, the leaders of the big three countries after World War II had, which we're going to look at in the next video. But just the sheer fact that America now had this weapon, was able to use it, completely changed the way they interacted with other countries. And in turn, it meant those countries absolutely furiously redoubled their efforts to make sure that they had the bomb as well. And this is the start of the arms race. Now, the two bombings that took place in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, many historians argue that they helped to speed up the end of World War II and help Japan to surrender. Some argue that it was more important that on the same day as the second bomb was dropped, August the 9th, the Soviet Union finally entered the war against Japan. But whichever way we look at it, the bombs had been used and they proved that America now had the power to do this. The casualties are not exact, they're roughly 80,000 at Hiroshima and roughly 35,000 at Nagasaki. The reason why they were lower at Nagasaki is because the bomb detonated in a valley and that shielded the city from some of its impact. Incidentally, the plane that dropped the first atomic bomb was the Enola Gay, and we've got a, a picture of it here in the museum. Um, the Enola Gay and the bombardier was, was a man called Thomas Farabee. This is him actually having dropped the bomb on Hiroshima that took those lives. Interestingly, his perspective on it was that it was an act that needed to be done, and after World War II, he didn't express regret at the action. He said that he felt it was justified and that it brought about the end of the war. But, as we said, the most significant effect of this was that the Soviet Union, in terms of the Cold War, then made a huge commitment in order to, first of all, to get the atomic bomb, and then to be able to compete with the USA in terms of the number of atomic bombs they, they controlled. It wasn't until the 29th of August 1949 that the Soviet Union detonated their first atomic bomb in a, a project called First Lightning. And at that point, both of these countries had atomic power. Had they still been friends, that would not have been an issue. But by this point, the relationship between the two superpowers had deteriorated to the war to the point where they were serious rivals. And this is how we consider the start of the Cold War in terms of arms race.